So I was going through an old video regarding Mifa's relationship with Link, and then I realized that I forgot something really important regarding that topic. I know you guys can't get enough of her, so I thought, why not do another video about it? It certainly would help clear up some questions regarding the other one, so here we go. It's time to prove once and for all that Mifa is the only one for Link. Oh no, not again. Let's see now. What the heck? Hang on a second. Hey Ryan, did you touch my computer at all? Will, I'm an entire country away from you. Oh. Well, remember that one time where I joked about Zelda being a yandere? Uh, hello? Hello? <sighs> Why does he always hang up on me? Wait, what's this? You know what, let's not do the Mifa episode. By creating an open world game as big as this, there were some challenges involved that Nintendo had to solve in order to make it work. Mechanics such as fast travel, horses, and climbing were made in order to prevent another Wind Waker from happening. While this world is big, it certainly isn't static. Enemies and animals are scattered throughout the world in order to add life to the game, as well as treasure chests and items that grow naturally in the wild. That brings up a problem, however, that Nintendo needed to fix. Because it was technically possible to kill every single enemy and suck Hyrule Drive resources, something had to be done to prevent this. Enter the Blood Moon. Each night, there is a small chance that when the moon rises, it will be a deep red color. Malice will cover the surface of the world, and the atmosphere turns red. After a somewhat creepy cutscene, all monsters respawn as well as items and other elements found within the world. There are quite a few things I could discuss regarding this strange event. However, I thought I would simply take a step back and look at the science of this. Is there a logical explanation for an event like this to occur? Well, by the end of the video we will hopefully have an answer. Starting off, let's talk about why a Blood Moon exists. While many people think it exists just to make sure the world doesn't run out of content, it has a much more important role. Just in case something would spawn incorrectly and result in the game crashing, Nintendo needed a way to reset the world before anything disastrous occurred. This was in the form of a Blood Moon. This way, the game would be able to back up its entire world, and the person would be able to continue playing the game. Have you ever had a Blood Moon randomly occur during the daytime? Because this is the result of something in the world having loading issues, and the game does this to reset the enemies and items. It's pretty weird and awesome when it occurs, but thanks to that, people can play the game without anything bad happening. But because of this, most people look at the Blood Moon as simply a way to keep the world filled with monsters and mini-bosses. But when you step back and take a look at the Blood Moon, it's kind of bizarre. For some reason, when it occurs, Calamity Ganon is able to revive all monsters you had previously slain in the world. And the moon having a deep red color, does that have something to do with Ganon's malice? To answer this question, we need to know more about how Calamity Ganon's power works. It might sound pretty straightforward. You know, uh, when the nighttime comes, Stal monsters can spawn and stuff. And that's because of the power of his... malice. <laughs> In all seriousness, during the night, many Stal enemies such as Stal Coblins and Stalfos will spawn. This is also the only time you can fight Stalnox, one of the overworld mini-bosses. Because of a previous video, we can assume that Malice is the reason these dead creatures come to life. So this must mean that Ganon's power has something to do with the night since enemies such as Stal creatures only appear at this time. At least, that's how it looks at a first glance. Until we take a look at one of the shrine quests within the game. Within the Great Hyrule Forest, there are ruins north of the Lost Woods that you can enter. The player must navigate through the darkness and fight a Henox in order to uncover the shrine. What's important to note is that whether it is day or night, the ruins will always be pitch black. What's interesting, however, is the type of enemies you see here. Of course, I mentioned the Henox. However, Stal Coblins are also seen in this area. This means that Ganon's power doesn't have to do with the nighttime, but something more specific. Darkness. This might not sound that important, but it is vital to solving this entire puzzle. Now, switching the topic to the moon itself, as shocking as it might sound, blood moons like this do occur in real life. And going even further, there is an explanation as to why Ganon can revive dead enemies at this time. According to Zelda, during the blood moon, 
Ganon's power grows. It rises to its peak under the hour of the Blood Moon. So there is something about the Blood Moon that causes Ganon's power to peak. Let's find out what that is. While you might look at the moon as just something that is there to look pretty during the nighttime, it is very important and has some pretty significant effects on the Earth. High tides and low tides exist because of the gravitational pull the moon has on our planet, and it helps stabilize the Earth as it orbits the sun. But what would happen if one day our moon suddenly disappeared? Or if some random octopus destroyed it? Shout out to anyone who gets that reference. Flooding would occur, and without it, our Earth would wobble on its axis. Severe storms and drastic changes in weather would occur, and human life would slowly but surely diminish. However, it is also important to note that the nighttime would be significantly darker. You see, the reason the moon shines is because it reflects the light from our sun. While it only reflects 3-12% of sunlight, this is enough light to keep our night skies lit up. Sure, it's not a lot. However, it makes a huge difference. But if no moon was in the sky to reflect sunlight, it would be near pitch black. Almost no light would reach the Earth's surface. You'll understand why this is important later on in the video. You know how I said blood moons occur in real life? Well, I wasn't lying. You might know them for another name. A lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipses occur when the moon is positioned behind the Earth in its shadow. There are three types of lunar eclipses. Total, partial, and penumbral. The one that we'll be looking at specifically is a total eclipse. A total lunar eclipse occurs when the entire moon passes through the Earth's umbra shadow. These types of eclipses are super rare since the arrangement of the celestial objects needs to be very precise. Because of this, you would think that the moon would be invisible to the human eye at this time, but something entirely different occurs. While the moon is behind the Earth's shadow, some sunlight still passes the Earth's atmosphere. When it does this, a phenomenon known as Rayleigh scattering occurs. Colors that are towards the violet spectrum get filtered out. Because red wavelengths are least affected by this, they pass right through and hit the moon. This means that the moon will be given a red-orange color. Sound familiar? It should, because this is exactly what happens in Breath of the Wild. Not only that, but like in real life, the blood moons in the game are very rare. So Calamity Ganon is not using any sort of dark power on the moon. If he didn't exist, this event would still happen the exact same way. But with that said, the Blue Moon still is the reason that Ganon's power rises to its highest. Remember how I talked about the consequences of not having a moon? It would be much darker at night. This same effect can actually occur during a total lunar eclipse. As previously stated, the reason it isn't pitch black during night is due to our moon reflecting the sunlight. So theoretically, if less light hit the surface of it, then our nights would be much darker. So if the moon is fully inside the Earth's shadow and only red light is hitting the surface, significantly less light is being reflected off of its surface. This means that during a total eclipse, it would be a lot darker in certain areas. I think you might know where I am going with this. Ganon's power is based off of darkness, and during a blood moon, it reaches its peak giving him the power to resurrect the dead with malice. A blood moon is a naturally occurring event, and when it happens, the nighttime is significantly darker for a short period of time. This is why all monsters can be revived during a blood moon. And there you have it. Despite what you might think, the moon turning red has nothing to do with Ganon's power. However, because of its effect on the planet, the events following the blood moon can occur within the game. Obviously, this wouldn't explain why items and other elements of the world respawn. However, like previously mentioned, the blood moon was in reality just a way to prevent the game from crashing. But now you have a scientific reason as to why it would respawn monsters every time it occurred. And that is the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you like what you see, make sure to subscribe. A link to my Discord will be in the description. And if you have any other theory ideas, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. I've been Nintendo Black Crisis, and I will see you guys later.